So hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. We at the First Year Engineering Office are so happy to have you join us and are so excited to get to know each and every one of you. I'm Simran, my pronouns are she, her, and this year I will be the orientation lead for the First Year Engineering Office. One fun fact about me is that I love to garden and I will be co-hosting this event today. Hi everyone, my name is Aliza and my pronouns are she or her. This year I will be the first year ambassador lead and a fun fact about me is that I enjoy drawing and painting and I will also be co-hosting this event with Simran. So before we begin, we wanted to start out with a land acknowledgement, although we may not all be in Toronto right now. We are doing a land acknowledgement to show respect for Indigenous peoples and recognize that we as settlers are here on their land. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a tre treaty between the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. And now just a bit of housekeeping. Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, we have put together an exciting series of virtual pre-orientation activities in order to share the important information with our incoming class of engineering students. This event today will be recorded and sent to everyone if you would like to refer to the topics discussed at a later time. We encourage you to ask us questions and we have staff here ready to answer them. Here at Ryerson and the First Year Engineering Office, we treat all people with dignity and respect, so please be mindful of your peers. I'm sure that we all understand that these are unprecedented times and until we can meet you all face to face, we hope that these virtual experiences that we've created will help you transition into your first year at Ryerson University. Since the university will be conducting most, if not all of fall semester online, we wanted to take this opportunity to help you get ready for online learning. Through today's event, you'll learn how other students adjusted to online learning, the basics of how to use Zoom, and tips for how you can master work from home learning. So to ask a question, hover your mouse over the bottom of the Zoom window until you see the horizontal menu. The Q&A icon says Q&A underneath. You can click on that and a dialog box should open up. From there, we recommend scrolling through the answered column to see if your question has already been asked and answered and that saves everyone some time. If it has not been yet addressed, you can type in your question. Additionally, please note that you can arrange your screen in whatever way works for you. You can go into full screen mode, have the presenter's video and the screen side by side, or any number of variety of configurations. How you arrange your screen does not impact anybody else's view, so feel free to adjust the windows as you see fit. So first, let's do a quick poll to get to know everyone who's joined us today. Since this is a webinar, we can't see or hear any of the audience members, but we want to get to know you. So please take a moment to fill out this quick poll. All right, so here are the results of the poll. It looks like everybody is really excited to learn all the new things that come with the university experience. So if you haven't already, be sure to sign up for our engineering boost courses as they will help you transition academically from high school to university. And the sense of community at Ryerson is really great. We love spirit and even though we might be online, your orientation week and your frosh week will be just as fun, I promise. And the freedom, once, if you guys figure out how to have freedom without your siblings or your parents bothering you, please let me know because they're bothering me all the time. <laughs> So over the next few months, we are going to be having a vast variety of events we're going to be hosting. There will be some game nights, and as I mentioned before, some few mini courses that will get you familiar with university content. And overall, all these events are designed to give you the university experience right from your computer. And many of you may be wondering what the First Year Engineering Office, or the FYEO, is. The FYEO is your ultimate resource as a first year engineering student. We're here to support you in your foundational year of engineering. Our award-winning team offers you guidance, resources, and answers all your questions about your academic career and beyond. Our team is here to help you with academic advising, administrative support, and of course, support you from your transition to high school to university, which this year is going to be especially unique. <laughs> all right, so another big part of the FYEO is our amazing team of first-year ambassadors, or FYEs. I am the FY lead and this year our team consists of 19 upper year engineering students across all disciplines. The FYAs are here to help you succeed, answer your questions and help you adjust to university. 
So don't be afraid to reach out to them throughout the summer, especially if you're looking for help with anything related to Ryerson. They'll be helping us out with many events over the summer, but be sure to follow along all our social media platforms to meet each and every one of them. They will also be hosting our weekly Insta Live sessions every Friday at 1.30 p.m., which will cover a variety of topics from financial aid to campus clubs to test prep and more. With that in mind, now is a great time to introduce our two FYAs who will be helping us out today, Alexis and Tarob. Both Alexis and Tarob are seasoned FYAs with lots of experience. So please welcome Alexis and Tarob. Hi everyone, my name is Alexis. My pronouns are she or her. I am one of your FYAs this year and I'm going into my fifth and final year of electrical engineering in September. Hi everyone, my name is Tara. My pronouns are she and her. I'm in my fourth year of aerospace engineering and I'm really excited to get to know all of you over the course of the summer. And now we're going to pass it over to the FYAs to tell us a little bit about their experiences transitioning to online learning and working from home. Okay, um, hi everyone. So I'll start with telling you about my experience. Um, so transitioning to online classes was definitely a challenge at times. And this may have been because I have never taken an online class before. So I really didn't know what to expect. Um, I found that there were two main struggles that I faced. And that was one, finding the motivation to actually participate in online classes. And two, um, struggling with time management. So when Ryerson announced that the rest of when the rest of the winter 2020 semester was going to finish online, I felt really relieved that the school made the decision for the health and well being of students. But I was also really anxious as to what was going to happen with lectures and labs, since these were all taking place in person. So during that transition to online classes, I found that I really quickly lost any motivation that I had to attend any online lectures and to study because I thought that well, now everything's online. I can just access lectures whenever I want. Um, and I also have more free time now that I'm not commuting to and from school. But I quickly realized a few things. So at the time, there was about a month left of the semester and I had already put in a lot of work since January. So I didn't wanna lose any motivation and almost give up um, on the rest of the semester. Um, and also a lot of the courses I was taking were prerequisites for the courses that I will be taking in, the, in my final year. Um, so the content that I was learning then will be continued to be built off in the fall semester. So to help myself find the motivation to continue with online classes, what I found worked best for myself was to keep the routine that I originally had while I was physically attending classes. So to me, this meant getting up early in the morning at 730 and continuing the same morning routine I had as if I was physically going to school. But instead of physically going to school after that routine, I would just come and sit down here at my desk. Um, in addition to this, I also tried to keep in mind the bigger picture as much as I could. Um, so to me, the bigger picture meant thinking about why I was taking these courses in the first place and why it would be important for me to continue to try my best. So the second challenge that I faced was time management. So even though I was saving about two hours each day from commuting, um, I still felt very overwhelmed because I had to watch these lecture recordings, which were about two or three hours long. And then I had to do my homework. I had to finish my labs. And I also started working from home. So to help with that, at the start of each week, I made a checklist of all the tasks that I wanted to accomplish that week. And then each day, I would break it down even smaller and choose just three things that I wanted to finish that day. So for example, um, what one day would look like for me would be um, one, I would watch a controls lecture and take notes. Um, two, I could finish a chapter of communication systems homework. And three, I would finish a signals and systems lab. So for me, I found that this really helped because by focusing only on those three tasks each day, I was less overwhelmed. And by the end of the week, I was able to typically move throughout my entire checklist. So right now I'm working from home and everything I did for school for the most part still applies. Like for motivation, I still wake up um, early in the morning and I do my normal routine as if I was physically going into work. Um, but instead of physically going into work, I come and I sit down here at my desk again. Um, for time management, I focus on completing about three tasks a day, depending on the size, if not more or less, um, just not to overwhelm myself. Now with the fall semester starting in a few months and classes being held completely online, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous because I think it's strange to think that a program in engineering that has hands-on components that are typically done um, in person in labs, um, during tutorials, like doing experiments, 
um, is going to be completely online. Um, and I also know that I'm probably going to face the same challenges that I did face as I was transitioning to online learning and working from home uh, with regards to like motivation and time management, um, maybe more, maybe less. I'm not sure yet, but I know I'm going to continue to use um, those strategies that work for me as well as try to implement and test out any other strategies that I find. Um, so that concludes my experience with transitioning to online learning and working from home. Um, and now I'm going to pass things off to Tarab. Thank you, Alexis. Um, so a large portion of my transition out to online school was shadowed by fears about the COVID-19 situation and a little bit of a fear for online school. Um, the majority of the courses that I took last semester were complex and lab focused, so the transition was a little challenging in the beginning. Um, since this is an unprecedented time, it took uh, my peers, my friends, profs, and even the TAs some time to get used to online delivery, but thankfully we had a transition week where essentially it was a week of classes that helped us get set up with online school and test different platforms. Um, and my department was really helpful with, uh, with the testing process. So we used Zoom or Google Meet and they worked collaboratively with, uh, with all of us as students to make sure that it was the best that they could offer. So I really greatly appreciated that. Even though I have taken an online course before, it was structured completely differently. So even though I knew what being in an online class felt like, the shift in March was really tough. Um, luckily, the transition week came uh, at a really good time. So I got to experiment with a couple of different methods to maximize my productivity and get that adjustment process through. Uh, my first step was definitely to get a blue light filter for my glasses and for my computer screen so that my increased screen time didn't hurt my eyes as much. Moving into the online semester, I know a couple of things that I will be implementing for sure. So the first is I want to be able to separate my workspace and my living space. And the second is um, having a better system to manage my deadlines and all the deliverables. So I tried both of these for a couple of weeks in the winter semester and have had really good success rates with them. The first one, which was separating my workspace and my living space, I was able to do by stop, like by putting a stop to any studying or any work that I was doing in my room and specifically from my bed. My room is where I go to to relax after a really long day at work or at school and bringing any of that stuff into this space was very counterproductive for me. Uh, since everyone in my family has been working from home, we've made a little makeshift office uh, in our dining room. Um, in addition to the separation, it also keeps me accountable to other people to make sure that I'm up on time, attend all of my meetings from my new office space. Uh, second, I began depending a lot more on my Google Calendar. I have effectively scheduled almost every hour of my day, including like food breaks or lunch. Um, this gives me a lot of structure to get through my day and it also feels a little bit more like regular school where I have everything in my calendar ready to go. I would also feel very guilty um, if I didn't rely on my Google Calendar because every time I would snooze a notification, it would pop back up repeatedly. So this is kind of a way for me to again keep myself accountable to make uh, make time to go to my lectures finish all my assignments etc um, i integrated all of my calendars for my extracurriculars my job and my school uh, my schoolwork into one and downloaded the app onto my phone so i could see where my day and my week looked like and where i would have some downtime to kind of relax and take care of my mental health get a breather maybe go outside um, to get some sun Thankfully, I'm feeling really good about the upcoming semester and even the rest of the summer, but I do miss the Ryerson community a lot and I really want to be with them as soon as I possibly can. Right now I'm working from home, as I mentioned, for the engineering outreach office here at Ryerson as a Eureka Camp Counselor, um, where I teach young kids between the ages of 8 and 13 about STEM using interactive activities and encourage them to pursue STEM related activities. So this requires me to be on call for most of the day. So my system with my blue light, um, managing my calendar and separating my work and my study space has never been more vital. And I'm glad to have found a happy medium to kind of work until this pandemic, hopefully hopefully passes soon. Thank you so much, Alexis and Tara, for sharing your experience. I definitely agree. Transitioning to online classes is a definitely a big challenge. Uh, personally, the beginning was really difficult for me to adjust to. I really had to push myself to attend online classes. And like Alexis said, uh, knowing I could access all of the lectures at a later time really made it difficult to stay on top of my work. 
but I did create a routine for myself, which helped me ensure that I was doing small but several tasks throughout the day to remain productive and focused. And also staying away from comfort spaces also really helped with that. I think also having a good support system played a lot uh, during that time as my fam family was able to understand when I needed time to kind of focus on school versus spend quality time with them. But yeah, um, I'm going to pass it on to Simran to share her thoughts. Yeah, so just like everybody mentioned, um, I was really happy that I didn't have to commute any anymore and I was saving about three hours a day. And this extra time that I had, I put towards my self-care and mental health because I always separated school and home really well. I would always complete all my schoolwork at school. And then when I came home, I never studied or did any work. This meant long hours at school, but I knew that when I walked into my house, I never had to think about it. So having to do school at home was difficult for me because for years, this has been a work-free environment. So making sure that separation was a hard transition for me, but nonetheless, it was accomplished. I created the separation by doing work in the kitchen and never taking my schoolwork to the bedroom. Yes, the kitchen did get noisy sometimes, but it was helpful that I wasn't alone. At school, we interact with so many people every day. And if I was locked in my room, it would have started to get very lonely very fast. And I was also very happy that I was able to spend some time with my family. With long hours at school, I didn't see my sisters and my parents all that often. And one thing about shifting everything online was that things slowed down in our busy lives and we were able to spend some time together. So with that being said, uh, we want to hear from the audience. So don't worry about this. This is completely anonymous. So feel free to answer this mentee question and share your experiences. So yeah, on your phone or on your desktop, uh, head over to menti.com and then type in the code and you will get a prompt and all the words should start uh, popping up there. So definitely staying motivated is really hard because you just wanna lay in bed all day. You don't really have anywhere to go. So that is definitely one thing that is a big habit that might have to change once school starts in the fall. There is one that says time management and lack of motivation. I think that's a pretty big one. Um, being at home, you are in your kind of comfort space. So it is difficult to kind of um, find the motivation to just do your daily tasks. But uh, the FYAs have actually shared their experience so far. So I think we can really we can all really learn from their experiences as well as use our own little techniques to kind of find that motivation. And also for um, friends, I think is a big one. We rely on our friends and our social environment quite a bit and not having that can make it very difficult and you know get a little bit isolating. But there definitely are ways you can overcome that, making sure that you know, you're keeping up to date with your friends, you're FaceTiming or like you're trying to play virtual games online. We're also gonna be hosting a game night and a movie night soon. So that's also a way for you to get to know a few more incoming students in a more like social environment. This one's really important, keeping myself motivated and focused on continuing schoolwork, uh, focused on removing as many distractions from my workspace as possible. Uh, that's what you really want to do, especially when you're trying to be productive, as it can get very distractive because, again, you are home. Um, it's your comfort space. But yeah, definitely working on those is really important when it's time to learn. Yeah, so one that just popped up says attempting to study in a pretty loud and busy home. This can definitely get difficult when, you know, everybody's at home. Nobody can really go anywhere. Um, it's ensuring that communication with your household is there and you're letting them know that, hey, this is my time to study. I have to pretend like I'm at school and just making sure that open communication is there is really, really important. I think we'll take one more and that is this one. So learning to make my own schedule and routine was harder compared to the schedule I was used to when I was physically at school. Um, I actually experienced this as well, but you kind of have to be your own manager. Um, I think one thing that really worked for me was just creating a day-to-day day -day tasks or a to-do list uh, every day just to ensure that I was completing all of my tasks on time and just so I felt like I was doing something productive throughout the day. And also just don't be too hard on yourself. You're at home, it might be hard to have this motivation, but just don't pound yourself like too hard if you're not able to accomplish everything that you're doing. That's why it's easy, it's, or sorry, it's easy. It's better to set smaller goals and shorter tasks for you to accomplish your day to day. Don't overwhelm yourself with to-dos. Definitely. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, everyone. 
Um, before we move on, we kind of wanted to open up the floor to take any of your questions. We did have a question, so I think we should actually answer some of these live. But someone asked, how many classes do you have in a day? So I kind of want to open this up to the FYAs to share their thoughts. Um, sure, yeah. So it varies from day to day. I can have anywhere between two classes to up to four or five classes, but these all kind of vary in length. Um, so my classes can be anywhere between one hour and three hours. So it really depends on the day of the week uh, according to my schedule. Okay, we have one more. Um, and the question is, when do we create our schedule starting first year? Um, so I can answer this question. Um, so as a first year student, your schedule is already pre-made. Um, you will automati automatically be enrolled into all of your first semester classes. Uh, but on J August 11th at 6 a.m., you will be able to swap courses around, um, choose your liberals, uh, and just kind of figure out which, uh, which timings for your classes work for your schedule best. If there aren't any other questions, we can move on. Okay, so now we'll move into the next section of the webinar, which is online learning tips. So our FYAs are now going to share some tips that have helped them with online learning and some key points about participating in Zoom lectures, which will definitely be a big part of many of your classes in the fall semester. Uh, sorry, Lisa, we just got like a bunch of questions that just popped up as you uh, changed the slide. Um, so I'm just going to answer what is a liberal course. So a liberal is kind of like the electives that you take in high school. So they can be geography, history, like art, science, like anything like that. And you need two uppers and two liberal, uh, sorry, two lowers to graduate. So you have, you have an allocated time slot in your first year, your third year, and your fourth year to fill in these liberals. And uh, for situations where your schedule will clash, we have this new program called Visual Schedule Builder, where it will ensure that your classes don't clash. And when you're changing sections, you're making sure that things don't overlap and you can see everything on the screen there. And Tara, you might be able to help me with this. Uh, what is the OSMS? Um, yeah, so OSMS is the Optional Specialization in Management Sciences. Um, and it is a business option that is specifically designed for engineering and for science um, students. So you can add that to your degree and you kind of get specialized courses in business, um, econ, project management, um, accounting. So it's kind of like an add on to your degree to help well make you a little bit more well rounded for the professional world um, and also just give you an understanding of like how business works actually and it kind of works in your benefit because it makes you a little bit more marketable to employers um, and shows that you're a well-rounded professional. So OSMS courses will run in the summers and you can take them over um, the course of your degree as long as you're done all of these six courses before you graduate. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so before we pass it on to the FYAs, we just wanted to explain the difference between a Zoom meeting and a Zoom webinar. What you're currently watching is a Zoom webinar, so none of the audience members can see or hear each other. Some of your lectures may happen in this format, but some may also happen in a Zoom meeting. In a Zoom meeting, you'll be able to see, chat, and speak with everyone on the call, including your professor and fellow students. Zoom meetings also allow for breakout rooms where you can have smaller group discussions as well as participate in other activities. If you come on our virtual tour, which is better than GPS event, it's going to take place on July 9th, and you'll be able to experience breakout rooms firsthand. There are a few additional steps required to join and participate the Zoom meeting, which Alexis and Tara will cover now. As always, feel free to drop any questions you have in the Q&A box. Okay, so first, there are two possible ways to enter a Zoom call. You can either type in the meeting ID or click the link that you will find in your calendar or email. Sometimes you'll have to sign in using your Ryerson login for authentication. There's also a Zoom mobile app, which is where student, some students may choose to join meetings from. It is recommended that you use Zoom on your laptop or desktop so you can find all the features easily accessible when participating in lectures. When you join a Zoom call, you will also get prompted to this screen to enter your name. Um, please be sure to click join with computer audio. After that, be sure to mute yourself and turn off your video. Some of your lectures will be in a meeting format, which is what you see on the screen, and others will be 
in this webinar format, which is how this event today is being hosted. So the following steps are going to show you how to participate in lectures that will be hosted in meeting style. So muting yourself is very important as it can get distracting and the other students will not be able to hear the professor. And the same goes for the video. The professor will be sharing their screen and if you have your video on, it can be very distracting and it's not necessary unless the professor asks you to share your video. Next, to participate in the lecture and let the professor know if you're on track with the rest of the class, there's some prompts that you can use. Um, if you click the participants button on the bottom left, you will see the pop up on the right. Using the buttons on the bottom right, you can then click the raise hand if you have a question, or if the professor is asking you if you understand, you can click yes or no. Once clicked, I'll show up beside your name on the participants tab and we'll stay for a few seconds. To follow up with asking professors questions during a lecture, you can also raise your hand by clicking the button as we showed before. Sometimes the professor will ask you to unmute yourself and you can talk your question out or you can type it in the chat feature. Beside the participants button on the bottom tab, click on the chat button and you can type out your question to the entire class. If you would like to ask a private question to the professor beside the two at the bottom of your screen, you can click on everyone or privately message. And in this case, the orientation lead, who is the host of this meeting, I can privately message them. If there is a co-host as a part of the meeting, you can also privately message them. Another way to participate in lectures is to use the reaction buttons on the bottom right. You can either clap or a thumbs up when you, and when you click either or on the top left of your screen, you will have a pop up for a few seconds. Lastly, to leave a meeting, you click on the red button that says leave on the bottom right. A pop up will show up and confirm that you want to leave the meeting. So click leave meeting and with that you will be done your Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you Alexis and Tara for introducing everyone on how to use Zoom. Uh, we want to make sure that future webinars are as engaging for you as possible and that the FYAs are as helpful as possible. So please share your answers to this quick poll. Okay, so it seems like a lot of people are interested in uh, getting to know other students through the movie nights and things, social events. So I'm very excited for these because we're not able to have those interactions in person. So we're going to try our very best to make sure that these are engaging and fun for you folks as possible. And be sure that you're always following us on our social medias. Uh, that's where you're going to get all our information for any upcoming events. So be sure to do that. And as always, the FYAO staff and the FYAs are always here to support you. So do not hesitate to reach out to us for anything. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of additional learning tips that can be implemented in your new routines. Some of these I've used um, the past year, so I thought I'd share them with you guys. So the first one is trying to separate your workspace and your living space. So what that means is obviously don't sleep where you don't study where you sleep um, because it get it can get very di uh, distracting easily. Um, the next one is take breaks throughout the day whenever you need to, and also use the resources that are available to support you. Um, it can get very tiring, just like constantly looking at a screen. So definitely take as much time as you need throughout the day uh, to kind of give yourself that break. Uh, the next one is sticking to a routine. Um, again, like I mentioned before, be your own personal manager, kind of create your own schedules, uh, and make sure you follow up with those as well. And then the last one for me is don't overwhelm yourself with work. Stick to a few tasks throughout the day and make sure that they are completed well. So also let them know that the people around you that you're trying to work and study so you're not being bothered by distractions of people coming in and out and just, you know, bothering you when you're trying to focus. And do not be afraid to ask for help. Working from home can seem like you're alone and it's all on you, but your classmates, your coworkers, and your professors are all online and ready to help you when you need it. Structure your days as you would at school, be your own personal, personal manager, like Aliza said, and be sure you keep track of your deadlines. Using apps like Google Calendar, which is also known as GCal, to create day-to-day -day tasks can be very helpful. Using your GCal will be very beneficial because your school schedule will be on it. And I recommend syncing your Ryerson GCal to your phone so you're always organized and you can add items to help you keep yourself on track. Also, using the social media lock tool to avoid distractions during the day can be very helpful. Okay, and as we promised, we're now going to open up the floor for your questions. So if you haven't already, please feel to send any questions in and we'll answer them right now. I see one. Um, the question asks, how will the writing skills test be taking place? 
Um, so that is actually tentative, but most likely the writing skills test will be taking place online, but you will get more information from the first year engineering office within the next couple of weeks regarding that. Okay, I see two more. So what movie do you guys want to watch for the upcoming movie night? Okay, um, so we will definitely be um, holding polls on our social media platforms. So definitely check those out within the next couple of weeks. We will be asking you guys for your suggestions. So definitely answer and interact with us on social media. Okay, how will lab sessions be held? Again, that decision is kind of tentative, but we all know that most of fall um, semester will be happening online. Um, but your professors and your instructors will be giving you more information regarding that in the next couple of months. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I'm going to send these questions to kind of Simran, Tara, and Alexis. But what are some clubs for engineering students? How would they work online? So Simran, if you want to take a take on that. For sure. So Ryerson uh, Engineering uh, has a lot of clubs, student teams, uh, and uh, of course unions for you to be a part of. And it's up to kind of the students that run those uh, those teams to figure out how they kind of want to play it into the, the virtual world. Um, we will be hosting a meet and greet event, which will take place early September, where you can kind of get to know what teams are out there and what you can join and how to be part of the Ryerson community online. Um, Tara, you can go ahead. Yeah, so the question is, how is the Engineering Boost program going to be held? Is it going to be online? So the Engineering Boost program courses are going to be held on Zoom, uh, which is the platform we're using right now. And um, just like today, they will be recorded. If you aren't able to make it to the allocated time slots, they will be sent to you. And then as of right now, we have the math, the physics, and the programming uh, set up right now. So if you haven't already registered, please have, uh, head over to our website. All right, we have another question that's asking, is engineering at Ryerson as hard as people make it sound? So since we all are upper years, I think we can all kind of share our experience with this. I can start. Um, but I think it's really up to personal management techniques. Um, I would say if you kind of develop your work ethic early on and if you figure out how to study early on, um, you can definitely succeed in the program. Also with the first year engineering office, we do have a lot of uh, transition support resources that you can definitely reach out to throughout the year. Yeah, Simran, Tara, Alexis, do you guys want to share your thoughts? Um, yeah, so I've definitely had like good days and bad days, depending on like Aliza was saying, like managing myself and my workload. Um, something I will add is that like this program I found in my experience is not something that you can do alone. Um, and you need to build a good support system for yourself, be that from your friends, from your family, from people around you. Um, as soon as you figure out a good system that works for you, um, it can definitely be a little bit easier and not as challenging as it needs to. The material is complex, um, as is with most engineering level, um, university level programs, um, but there are ways to make it a little bit more manageable. Yeah, I definitely agree with Tara. Um, what I like to think is that you get out what you put in and for me, the hardest part, especially in first year, was the transition. Like, I went from knowing you, from knowing everybody in high school, and now you're like this one person, don't know anybody. Um, but it was definitely the academic transition in your first year. You think that it's all grade 12 review, but then when the exam comes, you just get hit, and you're like, this is not what high school is like. Um, so we're going to be hosting a lot of study halls that are hosted by the professors, and we'll show you what midterms and tests by engineering professors look like. And those are very different. So I think that was a big thing for me. And I definitely suggest that you um, attend these study halls for sure. Yeah, I completely agree with Elisa, Taraj, and Simran. Um, I think as soon as you get to university, um, things move really quickly in terms of academics. So sometimes it can be hard to keep up. And also um, different students have different strengths and weaknesses. So um, different courses, um, different students can find easy and other students can find it really challenging um, and I found I found this within my program like um, I 
I'm going into my final year of electrical engineering and I struggle with um, software courses, whereas a computer engineering student would excel at that. Um, but I find hardware courses um, pretty easy where a computer engineering student might find it um, really difficult. So um, different students have different strengths and weaknesses. Okay, we have another question that's asking, will the Boost programs be a Zoom webinar or a meeting? So, zoom in. Yeah, so we're actually not sure. Um, I think it will be up to the professor who is hosting the course, up to them to figure out how they would like to host the, the Boost programs. So just keep an eye out. Uh, we should be sending in, when you register, we should be sending out the links uh, shortly and it should have all the information on there. Okay, we have a couple more questions. Uh, the next one's asking, is it really difficult to be an engineering student and also taking part in sports? Does anyone have any experience with sports at Ryerson? Um, I can answer to this one. Um, when the university was still open, um, me and my friend group kind of made a volleyball team um, and participated in, in, in intramural sports. Um, I think when it comes down to handling coursework and extracurriculars, it all comes down to time management skills. Um, and that can get a bit hard to adjust to um, when you're in your first year, but as you um, progress throughout your undergraduate career, um, it does get easier. And I definitely do recommend um, students do look into um, participating in extracurriculars or intramural teams, because um, it's a fun way to do something other than just coursework. Okay, two more questions. Um, was the transition between high school material to university material hard? Does it get a lot harder in first year? So Simran and Tara, would you guys like to share your thoughts? Um, yeah, so the transition between high school, the good part was that your first semester kind of built on the stuff that you did in grade 12 and throughout high school. So about for the first month, it's largely, um, or even the first half of the semester is largely um, kind of reviewing some of that stuff and adding a little bit here and there. So it gives you a chance to get used to a new type of delivery, a new type of tests, um, a different environment completely. And then slowly it begins to build. So by the end of your first year, you're ready to kind of step into second year and get a little bit more complex material like in your classes. The transition wasn't, um, it wasn't too bad. Again, when I was coming into first year, I did the like the mini math course, which ran that summer. So it gave me, it kind of put me in the school uh, school mentality a couple of weeks before um, classes even started. So I would definitely recommend like doing something like that. Two more questions. Um, how was your transition into Ryerson a few years ago? Was it smooth sailing or a bit bumpy? What do you wish you knew back then? I can answer this. Um, and then we can actually, all of us can answer it. Um, but for me personally, I think first year was actually very good um, because I was kind of able to, again, find the resources that I needed, um, especially with the first year ambassadors. I reached out to a lot of them throughout the summer just to kind of get the information that I needed about first year. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing that. Uh, and then also throughout the year, like I mentioned, the first year engineering office does have a lot of support uh, resources for you guys. So you can always reach out to them regarding that. Samran, do you want to share something? Yeah, I can go next. So I was actually the complete opposite of Eliza. My transition was really, really rough. Um, I didn't, it was hard for me to make sure that I knew that I belonged in Ryang. It was it went from being, you know, excelling in high school and then your grades are not what you expect in high school. And it's a lot, it was a lot of putting myself down because I was like, this isn't what I envisioned university to be like. But I soon realized, like I went to the study halls that um, FYO would host uh, on the SLC fourth floor. So now that is going to be online, um, like tutoring, it's free tutoring that happens. So it's going there, figuring out how to make sure my academics were, you know, shifting. And after that, I feel like it was a little bit smooth sailing. It was a big mental health toll because I feel like I was being really hard on myself. And um, yeah, I would just say, do not be so hard on yourself. You're, even if you want that A+, plus, your mental health is not worth it. I personally don't think. So make sure you go out and find the resources that we have um, at the engineering office. And 
We also have counseling, which is very, very important. I think your mental health is very important. So do not think it's not. And I really, really recommend that if you feel like you need the help, make sure you go get it. So Tara, do you want to um, go next? Yeah, I want to focus on one part of your question, which is what do you wish you knew back in first year? Um, and this is something that I feel very strongly about. And I, I love to share this with all first years I come across. And it would be like, I wish I could tell myself that I shouldn't be so hard on myself. It kind of goes back into what Simran was saying. But when I was in first year, I was very focused, um, like socially and like all in other aspects. Like I was having a really good time. I loved university. Academically, I knew I wasn't performing as well as I'd hoped. And I would really put a lot of pressure on myself. Like I must get an A on all of my midterms and I must get an A on all my courses and I must make the Dean's list and I must do this and I must do that. I think being really hard on myself throughout first year from September all the way until my summer courses might have actually hindered my performance because I put so much pressure on myself and looking back on it now if I had taken more time to kind of figure out what system was working for me and then gone with that I would have definitely had more success um, so in like one sentence it would be like stop take a breather reassess and then move forward Thank you so much, Tara and Simran, uh, for your thoughts and your input. We have a couple more questions. Um, so the next question is asking, will we, will we be having our textbooks by September? So regarding all of your course material, all your course necessities, I would definitely say wait until you get enrolled into your course shell on D2L. And then once that is done, um, you will be able to actually reach out to your professors directly. Uh, and then you can ask them regarding that because uh, for your textbooks, not every textbook is always required. So definitely checking in with your professor for that is probably the most important thing you can do in terms of finding out what you need for each class. Okay, the next question is, is there a, la is there a last date to sign up for boost programs or can we sign up later if you're not sure if you want to do it just yet? Uh, so I can answer this question. Uh, the math and the programming will start on July 6th. Uh, there, you can sign up up until then. I don't know if we were going to have an end date for it, but it's preferable that you sign up before July 6th. And then if you choose not to come, that doesn't hinder your performance. Or there, the course is not graded. So if you sign up and you choose you don't want to participate, that's, that's totally okay. Okay, uh, there's another question that's asking, what do you think is the average GPA that I should aim for? Um, so this, I would say, is really up to personal preference. Um, you can work as hard as you want and you can aim for a high GPA or you can, it's really up to you, honestly. Um, what works for you best is definitely what you need to uh, make sure of during your first year. And again, like just trying to figure out, just kind of work towards building a good work ethic. I think that's what's really important um, throughout your undergrad. Um, yeah, GPA is just like a number, but definitely just work hard. Um, but oh, again, like everyone mentioned, don't be too hard on yourself because that's the worst thing you can do. Um, it will really take a great men uh, toll on your mental health. So definitely just see what works for you and yeah, you should be good. Okay, there's another question that's asking, do you know what topics the Boost programs will focus on? Is it review or intro to uni? So I can answer this question. It's going to be a little bit of both because a lot of your courses in your first year are high school review. There's calculus, you have advanced functions. Um, the physics that you do is also going to be uh, focusing on kinetics and motion. So Newton's second law and things like that. The programming course will be taught in the coding language C and you will focus with start off with the basics. Like I know no programming and that course really just, you know, gave me the ABCs of programming, and then you move into a little bit of complex uh, things. And the math course focuses on calculus and advanced functions. You do derivatives, some integrals, and then it'll prep you for calculus one, which will take place in the fall semester. Okay, since we are short on time, we will be answering the rest of the questions through the ch a chat option, um, and we will be sharing it with everyone else. But that pretty much brings us to the end of Keeping with COVID. Thank you so much to Alexis and Tara for joining us today and sharing their experiences, thoughts, tips, and tricks. Uh, and thank you, everyone. Thank you so much to everyone else in the audience for attending. We hope you enjoy the webinar, 
and we look forward to welcoming you to many more events over the next few weeks. So speaking of which, on Monday, June 22nd, you can join us for a Welcome to FIAS webinar. You'll learn more about the FYEO and the FYAs and the Faculty of Engineering and Architectural Science. Be sure to head to our website to register and don't miss it. And of course, don't forget to check out our weekly Insta Lives every Friday at 1.30 p.m. On behalf of Ryerson University and the First Year Engineering Office, thank you once again for joining us and we hope you and your loved ones are staying safe during this uncertain times. We look forward to keeping in touch.